The Superstar Racing Experience. It pains me to even be writing this video because I thought we should have been talking about what to expect in its fourth season since launching in 2021. Rather, here we are, discussing the rise and fall of SRX after just three seasons. The concept behind SRX was to provide a new platform of racing, which carried a similar concept to the original IROC series, which stopped racing after the 2006 season. The series was the brainchild of a combination of prominent investors in the racing world, including three-time NASCAR Cup Series champion and world-renowned racer across the board, Tony Stewart, former NASCAR team owner and legendary crew chief of Jeff Gordon, Ray Evernham, among others heavily involved with the series concept. Speaking of the concept, it was certainly unique. A race car that was unique all in its own weird way. This car was built for short tracks of all kinds, as the series was meant to highlight some of America's greatest short tracks, drawing in racers from all walks of life, experience, and skill levels. They were able to run these cars on both pavement tracks and dirt tracks, and at times, they put on some of the best shows each week in terms of racing product. In total, between its three seasons, 47 drivers made starts in the series, but considering they only ran six races a year and there was only 12 cars on the track, this series gave fans a chance to see a lot of talent go up against each other in their short time in racing. Three drivers hold the honor of being SRX champion, including Tony Stewart, who was the series' first champion in 2021, winning by an impressive 45-point margin, thanks to his three victories that season. Out of all drivers, Tony is the most accomplished driver in SRX's history, with five total wins, ten podium finishes, six wins in SRX heat races, and leading the most laps in four of the 18 SRX races. He quite literally is at the top in all categories, and rightfully so. I mean, if you're going to start this series, you might as well be the very best, right? His championship season could honestly only really be rivaled by the season that Ryan Newman had just last year in 2023, where he, too, won the series championship by a 45-point margin. Newman may very well be considered to be the series' second-best full-time driver, getting two wins and six podium finishes in his time with SRX but he very nearly became the only driver of more than one championship. But in 2022, he was beat by Marco Andretti of the famed Andretti family of racing. Marco's 2022 season was something to remember because he never won a single race that season. However, he was consistently up in the front and finding ways to almost always find himself on the podium at the end of the night. And it resulted in Andretti winning the championship in the closest SRX title battle in the series history, beating Ryan Newman by just two points. To add on to Andretti's close battle, third and fourth were right there with him until the end. Bobby Labonte lost by just five points, and Tony Stewart missed out on back-to-back -back titles by just seven points. Now, while the series was full of superstars, as it should be with the name Superstar Racing Experience, the series was known, specifically in its first season of operation, to be, for lack of a better word, the retirement home series to some fans. I mean, in the beginning, we saw guys like Michael Waltrip, Willie T. Ribs, and Paul Tracy, which, Paul Tracy, that's a whole other story with him. He was certainly where the drama was likely to come each week, and in the series' entire history, he is the only driver to ever be suspended in what was supposed to be a fun series, and it led to him being let go to not come back for the remainder of the 2023 season. But back to the superstars of the series, you also had some in the series, such as Haley Deegan, who may not be accomplished on the track per se, but she is a well-documented superstar in the sense that her fan base is undeniably large, as many have since followed her YouTube channel and other accounts, and she was legitimately a good draw for this small series to have racing. And while they got away from it in 2023, in favor of perhaps a good move by bringing in even more of today's stars in NASCAR and other series, SRX had what they called the local hero car, in which it rewarded somebody who was a well-known and prominent racer at the local short tracks they visited. And through the parameters set by SRX, they determined who would be the local hero for each track. And in fact, the series' first winner was a local hero as Doug Kobe won the very first SRX race held at Stafford Speedway. 
In total, 11 drivers won a race in SRX, and the elite drivers on this list include Tony Stewart with 5 wins, Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch, and Ryan Newman each have 2 wins, but Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott have a win to start ratio of 100%, winning in each of their 2 starts in the series. Meanwhile, Ernie Francis Jr., Bobby Labonte, Marco Andretti, Elio Castroneves, Doug Coby, Denny Hamlin, and Superman Jonathan Davenport each have one victory in their SRX career. When SRX first got started, their races were aired on Saturday nights with CBS Sports. The broadcasting team would change a little each week, but one constant remained as Alan Bestwick made his return to on-air racing broadcasting, being the official voice of SRX and his voice talents also appeared in SRX's only console video game appearance, which released based on a 2021 season. And while that was the only console game made for SRX, iRacing has since recently added a car from SRX into the roster of cars you can race on a popular racing simulator. While the broadcasts of SRX were good, ratings were always an interesting subject when it came to SRX. In their first year on CBS, which was held on Saturdays, meaning schedule-wise, it was a lot harder to book a lot of current NASCAR Cup Series drivers to make it out to race, they were able to average 1,253,000 viewers, which was really impressive for the series just starting out. And then going into year two, they did see a drop. While every race in 2021 at least hit over a million viewers, in 2022, the first four races were below a million viewers, and only the final two races were barely past a million. But, despite being under a million for the first four, they pushed just strong enough those last two races to average 1,000,000 viewers per race, which was down by 252,000 from the year before. It just seemed to me, as somebody who enjoyed the SRX, that in Season 2, it didn't have the same appeal that it did the first year. And I mean, the year before, they ended at Nashville Fairground Speedway. Nashville is such a big market city to be at, with a historic racetrack that many want to see return for NASCAR, and you had a monumental moment with Chase Elliott racing against his father. There was so much to be loved in Season 1. And then in Season 2, Nashville was moved to the fourth race of the year, and for whatever reason, advertising seemed to be down. You just didn't hear about it quite as much. There was also a big change in leadership in the company. At the start of 2022, it was announced that Don Hawk had been named the CEO of SRX, while Ray Everham announced that he was no longer in charge, and he was no longer in an active role with SRX, but he was still an investor in 2022. As much as I'd like to say the decline in ratings from 2021 to 2022 is as bad as it gets, well, that wasn't near the low point. That would come in 2023, and why it happened still baffles me, really. In 2023, it was announced that SRX was moving from CBS to ESPN. This was ESPN's first stock car racing series that they were broadcasting since they left their agreement with NASCAR following 2014. So many had high expectations for a worldwide leader in sports and what they could do to showcase SRX. Well, the truth is that they honestly did nothing. Production-wise, I thought they did a heck of a job, but advertising? I guess they didn't even try. They were also moved from Saturday nights to Thursday nights, repackaged as Thursday Night Thunder in this deal, and this gave them the chance to land so many new superstars of racing who are actually currently racing. In the past, it was hard to bring in your Denny Hamlins, your Kyle Bushes, etc. because of their NASCAR priorities, but moving to Thursdays got them so many more chances to bring in stars of the sport. But it just felt like ESPN did nothing to advertise it really. It was seemingly all on SRX to promote it, and they were just selling them the platform to be on. The 2023 season was also cursed to a certain degree as well. The second race of the year was canceled for Thunder Road Speed Bowl, replaced by a second race at Stafford Speedway after the town of Barry, Vermont suffered extreme flooding. My wife and I went on a week-long trip to New England last year, where we first went to cover the race at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And then we had it planned and booked to stay at a lovely bed and breakfast in Barrie. And while the weather turned out to be great when we arrived, and the flooding had subsided for the most part, there were bridges entirely washed away, and it would have made things more difficult for the area to accommodate a race of this magnitude. 
Now they did still race that night. It was just their usual local show still minus SRX who instead raced at Stafford Speedway as a result of the extreme floods. But getting back to the ratings, for whatever reason it was, when SRX changed over to ESPN, nobody watched it. The 2023 season on Thursday nights with ESPN saw a season low 377,000 viewers and it saw a season high of 589,000 viewers, which only came in its final two races of the year. The season averaged just 441,000 viewers. That's 560,000 less viewers than season two in 2022, and it's 812,000 less average viewers from the inaugural season in 2021. From season one to season two, it dropped by right around 20%. And from season two to season three, it dropped by nearly 56% in viewership. In total, from the series start in 2021 to season three, it dropped almost 65% in average viewership. So ultimately, if I have to place the biggest blame on SRX's fall, it's for sure going on whatever happened behind the scenes, whether it be the day change, ESPN's lack of promotion, or whatever it was that led to the abysmal ratings in 2023. On January 8, 2024, it was announced that former SRX founder Ray Evernham with Rob Kaufman had acquired the naming rights to IROC, which SRX was originally built on the principles of, and they had the intentions on doing IROC again, this time with the original name. At first, most race fans, including myself, thought that this could just be some healthy competition, but only three days later, on January 11, 2024, it was announced that SRX had agreed to postpone the 2024 season due to market factors. My best guess, with ratings down so significantly, and with only six races a season, all parties came together and agreed that financially, things didn't make sense. Seeing the timing of the announcement, one would have to imagine that ESPN, seeing the low ratings, chose not to renew, and SRX would be unable to land a major network deal for 2024. I imagine there was a lot more factors that played into SRX's shocking closure this year, but for this racing fan, all I can do is be thankful I got to experience what was and forever will be the story of the superstar racing experience. I consider myself very fortunate to have gotten to experience two of their races in Nashville. I would have loved to have seen them at Thunder Road as well, and I especially hate it for all those fans who live up there that they never got their race that would have been rescheduled for this season too. It was a series that had a special place in my heart. And while I do want to make it clear that a return is not totally ruled out just yet for SRX, for now, it is highly unlikely to return, unfortunately. And so there we have it. As quick as it first came into our life, the rise and fall of SRX was one of the fastest of any prominent racing organization in recent years. It truly is sad, and I believe that the SRX can be one of the biggest what-ifs in racing, and it certainly should be looked at as a case study for years to come as some of the goods and bads when considering launching a national racing platform. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it a like, and if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to never miss another new video here on Danny B Talks. Have a suggestion for another topic for my channel? Drop it down in the comment section below. Until next time we see each other, take care, and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.